Yeah. No geese flying over at yep. 2 o'clock this morning. Yep. They flew until I came here at 6 o'clock. Oh, wow. Flock after flock after flock after flock. There must have been 500,000 of them. I, I, I told to see that. No, there wasn't. I told Chris, I said, I said, I thought it was early. And she said, no, it's late in the year. I said, no, I said, it's early. They're flying in the dark. Yeah, and they were flying west. They were not flying south. Well, they have high Don't we'll figure that. Maybe they go down and get some mountains. And, I don't know, but they will flying west. They come right out of the east. Right out of the east, flying west. Thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Flocks of 100, flocks of 100, flocks of 100. Wow. Wow. Awesome. And, cool. and loud? Yep. Snow geese are loud. Yep. Hawkers, they just <laughs> boom, 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 yeah. once in a while. Snow geese like, we're not going to run around. They're loud, they woke me up. They woke me up 2 o'clock this morning. They should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> you wouldn't see them. Huh? You try not to see them? Yeah, I could see them. I, I went out at 2 in the morning, looked up, and they're you, so snow geese, you know, because it's light in the city. Shot right up on them. So you can see them really well. It's amazing. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was a bunch of dogs. You know, I thought it was coyotes. Coyotes, yeah. Those geese. So praise the Lord. Lord, I thank you for the geese. I thank you for letting us wake up early and to hear them, to see them. Lord, that was very cool. And I thank you, Lord, for your presence here. It's a wonderful thing, God. Your presence, your manifest presence. Something we can touch and feel. Thank you for that, God. Not that we are people who need to touch you and feel you, but Lord, we are people of faith. But I am really thankful you show up, that we can feel you like that. Thank you for it, Lord. I love you, Lord. Have your way today. Help your word to, to bring us to a place of understanding who you are and who we are so we can function in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you spoken to any mountains this week? Oh, yes. I preached last week about speaking to mountains. Hallelujah. Have you spoken to any mountains this week? We were praying this morning, and out of the mouth of, hey, because somebody, Regina maybe, is pre proclaiming things and speaking to things and praying over those things. and, and pro You know, glory to God. I, I said, I don't, even, I don't have to preach today. She just took over and started, you know, speaking to those mountains. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> In Mark 11, when you believe, you receive, you will have. Remember that last week? When you believe that you receive, you will have. I don't want us to forget about these things. In Hebrews 3, remember in 3 and 4, uh -huh. it says, if you believe, what happens? You get rest. It takes believing to have rest. Praise the Lord. Once you believe something, then you can rest in God. Okay, praise the Lord. And then in Hebrews 9, we get a clear conscience, a clean conscience. Mm -hmm. The blood of Christ gives us a clean conscience. If the blood of bulls and goats could cleanse to the, to the cleansing of sin, away, how much more the blood of Christ will clean our conscience from dead works? Praise the Lord. And I've been, I've been excited this week that my conscience is clean. And I want you to know, I need a clean conscience because sometimes I do things wrong. Very rarely, of course. <laughs> but I need to have my conscience clean, not just once. Uh, listen to this. Uh, there's something about uh, being born that everybody has to go through. It's called the birth canal. Right? Everybody from kings to paupers to carpenters to electricians to teachers to whomever, everybody has to be born the same way. Amen. Everybody is born the same way. Unless you, of course, you come in with a stork. <laughs> That's okay. Unless you came in, they formed you out of the clay and Zeus breathed life into you. If that's your thing, that's fine with me. I don't care. But there's one way to get born, I believe. Yeah. And that is by the water. Okay? Amen. The Bible also says we know to need to be born of water and of spirit. Yes. Right. So as there's one way to be born into the physical realm, there's one way to be born into the spirit. And the Bible says in John 3, it says, you must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. And he talked to uh, Nicodemus. He says, you're a teacher in Israel. Don't you know this stuff? 
Just, be, just as you were born in the physical, you need to be born in the spirit. He says, what am I supposed to do? Ch climb into my mother's womb and be, womb and be born again? Says, what? What's the matter with you? Don't you know this stuff? You need to be born again. In other words, you need to be born into the spirit realm. Yes. And Amen. as far as I can see, the only way to be born into the spirit is by the blood of Christ. Christ gives us his life. He cleanses our sins away. Therefore, life comes to us as His life comes to us, His Spirit comes within us. That's the only way I see to be born again. Because I try different ways. I tried transcendental meditation. I tried Eastern religions. I tried to become a bhakti yogi. I tried all those things. I even tried karma. Karma doesn't work. You're off crafts. That way your attaboys a lot. They did, I did anyway. I couldn't do enough good things to out karma my way out of the bad karma. <laughs> I tried, man. I tried. Because I was a pretty good guy. Don't be saying nothing. <laughs> she knew me 40 years ago. <laughs> so I, you know, I was always a really, really pure individual. I, you know, God borns us. So I just want us to know. And re want us to realize that as we're born physically, you must be born spiritually. Yes, I know. You must be born again. You must, yes. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, as we speak to these mountains, as we get rest as we believe, as we get our conscience cleared, and I want you to know this conscience clearing is not something that you make up or you play a mind game to get. Once you come into the into into Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to save me. I, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe your blood washes my sins away. So I need you to make me the person you want me to be. Come, God, and save my life. Amen. When you do that, for real, it's you don't have to figure it out. You know it. You wake up the next day going, whoa, I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. <laughs> I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. <laughs> Glory to God. And pretty soon you're smiling and going hugging everybody and, and saying hi to everybody. What is the matter with me? <laughs> That's the way I was. I was actually born again when I got born again. I was a different person. I, I was. Now, once you're born again, now listen to this. Once you're born physically, if you remain a physically baby, you turn into an idiot. And you don't grow, right? You know some people, 50 years old, still babies? Okay. Or 60, whatever. Okay. Still babies. And as you are born again in the spirit, you don't want to stay in that place of being born again right at the cross, right as the blood washes you clean. You don't want to stay there. You want to grow. You want to grow. You want to get mature. You want to find out the, what the Word of God says about you now that you're born again and find out what, a, what, a, what, what this born again person acts like. Yeah. We don't want to stay. You know, I know people just say, I got born again 35 years ago. Glory to God. I've been there ever since. Yeah, you have. You know, grow it a bit. <laughs> well, never read the word, never pray, never That's seek right. God, never serve anybody, never find out what God is trying to do in their life. Nothing like that. Praise the Lord. And we don't want to be like that. Amen. So, go with me to Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. I don't like it when you go to the Old Testament. Well, no, you're in the wrong place. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 8. The 8th chapter. This is really good. Uh, Jesse Duplantis preached this message to me the other day. And I'm not going to copy his message. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> but I want to talk about uh, the same things he talked about. It's really pretty good. But I'm not going to dwell here. Okay. So in Deuteronomy 8, 6-10. It says, Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. Amen. For the Lord your God is bringing you to a good land, a land of brooks, waters, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and the hills, a land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, not a bad place, mm -hmm. a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. Say, without scarcity. without scarcity. In which you will lack nothing. Say, we lack nothing. <laughs> this is it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. In other words, the, uh, you, uh, the material will... Okay, now watch this. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. 
Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping His commandments, His judgments, and His statutes as I command you today. In the King James it says, uh, uh, Remember the Lord your God. Remember the Lord your God. And I've been practicing this this week. Remembering the Lord my God. So when somebody comes up to me and says, Man, that house that you built is beautiful. And what, what do I say? Yep. That's right. Looking good. Eh? That's very nice. No, no. I say, yeah, God is good. He gifted me in that area. Thank God. You know, I give him, I remember the Lord my God. I don't take credit for myself. I don't take glory for myself. When, when somebody comes up and says, man, that was, a, that was a great sermon you preached. I say, yeah, God is good. Praise his holy name. You know, I was praying and God gave me that whole thing. Praise his name. We remember the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important to remember God. Otherwise, we're not getting into a place where we can understand who He is or who we are. Why? Because Ephesians... Now, gifts and callings equal purpose and fulfillment. Gifts and callings equal purpose and fulfillment. I want you to know, most people are looking for some purpose in their life. I have people come to me all the time and say, I don't know what God wants me to do. What's my purpose? I know a buddy of mine in here. His son won't go to work. His son won't go to work. He just won't work. He doesn't want to work. You don't feed him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> do I agree with that opinion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Should I put that on the TV? I'm going to worry. Don't quit feeding me. <laughs> Actually, the Bible says if you don't work, work you, don't you don't eat. eat. Right. 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 Yeah. So, and it also says the hunger of a man's mouth causes him to work. Amen. Nowadays in our society, at this point in time, you don't really have to work because everybody's <laughs> giving you whatever you need. Yeah. Right. Including us. We have a food pantry. We give away tons of food every week. Now, some of those people, yes, they are lazy. Some of those people, but I would say 85% of the people who come there need the food. Yes. Amen. A lot of those people are old. Amen. A lot of those people are infirm. A lot of those people are crippled. A lot of them. So praise the Lord. If we have to feed a couple of lazy people in order to help those people, I'm in. I'm in. Amen. You know, they stand before before God, not before me. But we as Christians are different people. We understand what it takes to live for God. Now in Ephesians 2.10 2, it says, We are His workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus for good works. That God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay? Now, do you believe that? Or you, do you disagree with God? I believe that. Hallelujah. Me too. Because each one of you here has a gifting. Each one of you here has a calling. Each one. Okay? Now watch this. Each of us have a gifting. An anointing. A calling. Okay? Each of us has... Each of us are becoming more like Christ, but Jesus in you looks different than the Jesus in me. Amen. Thank God. Amen. I don't want everybody to look like me. I look in the mirror every day, right? I go, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I don't want you to look like me. I don't want you to necessarily act like me unless I'm acting like Jesus and act like Amen. me. Okay? Amen. When I was a carpenter, I worked hard as a carpenter. I was a good carpenter. I went to work for a guy one time. Uh, actually, I didn't go to work for him. We were working on a job over here, and he called us. Hey, you guys help me lay, raise some walls. Yeah, sure. We dropped our stuff, went over there, and we we're raising walls. And I got it up, and he said, and I says, uh, he asked me, is that good? I says, come this way at eighth. And he says, the eighth? I don't even eighth on my tape. And I went, I'm glad I'm not working for you. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's close enough. Yeah, I like excellent work. Now watch this. There is a close enough. Now if it was a 30-second off, I'd have left it. So it wasn't building a piano. Okay? Do you understand? So there's, a, there's an understanding of what... I'm not going into perfectionism, but I'm going to do my dangest, my very best, to do the best I can do to the honor, honor of God. I'm not going to get weird about it. And, you know, oh, look at this way. 30 seconds. Wait, wait, wait. Too far. You know, you don't do that. Okay? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you give glory to God and you don't get weird about the whole thing. Praise the Lord. But each one of us, each one of us has that. Um, I was, after I got saved, a Christian carpenter. Okay? I wasn't a carpenter that was a Christian. 
I was a Christian carpenter, so somebody that came up to me and asked me questions about stuff, I would tell them about stuff. Hallelujah. I'd give glory to God. Somebody used to tell me, you know, that, that was really nice, that term you hung up there. It was really nice. I said, yeah, thank God. I, I, you know. A guy came up to me, he says, he says to me, he says, uh, why, why do you smile all the time? Why are you smiling all the time? I said, I'm smiling because Jesus loves me, man. Yeah. And what did he say? He says, oh, give me a break. Yeah. I said, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. I was standing on a bucket one time, putting in some trim above a door, and the guy comes up and he says, "Hey, you want to hear a joke?" And I went, uh, "Is it a dirty joke?" He says, "Well, yeah." I said, "No, I don't want to hear it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Christian. I don't want to hear that. So he starts telling it. Amen. <laughs> I wait till his lips quit moving. I said, "You done? Yeah. Okay." And so I went back to work. And this little little guy. He's a little Jewish guy. He worked with me. God bless him. He went to a concert with me. Anyway, he says, he comes up to me, looks up at me, he says, Matt. I went, yeah. He says, I wouldn't have laughed at that joke either. <laughs> Conviction. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Every time I did something like that, somebody else heard it, and somebody else was... was, was was blessed by it. Um, In fact, when I said that yeah, thing about uh, why are you smiling, when I said that, the kid that was working for this guy was in the room, and he was a Christian kid that hadn't been to church forever. He's backslidden doing his own thing. And he says, man, I can't believe that you told that guy that. <laughs> I said, man, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian, right? Yeah. I said, you need to come back to church with me. Amen. You need to come. And we'll get our lives right with God. In fact, I ended up being his friend. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Glory to God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, we are the called Lord. to raise up a standard. Yeah. Amen. Actually, it says the Lord will raise the up a standard. The Lord will raise up a standard. Amen. See that? Yep. As we seek God, it happens. It happens. It happens. Hallelujah. So we need to. We need to be our best. Okay. But we t need to reposition ourselves at times. Okay? Amen. Amen. As God leads. I used to bust tables. I wanted to be a carpenter my whole life. That's why I wanted to be. But I think I was a preacher. Because every time, every time I'd run into somebody, I'd tell them. Even in uh, high school, they, they used to give book reports, right? So I didn't like work at that point in time. So I'd make up book reports. I didn't like to read, actually. I make up book reports, so I, I make up a story. I tell them a really good story, and I give them the author and all this stuff. And I have people coming up, up to me later and say, hey, that's a pretty good story. Where, what book is that? <laughs> so, so I sent them down to the library, you know, it wasn't there. <laughs> I couldn't find that. Oh, I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> Tommy checked it out, it was a good book. So my calling my whole life was to be a preacher, but I was called at that point in time to bust tables. I delivered flowers. Amen. I did all kinds of goofy stuff. Amen. But I always wanted to be a carpenter, and they made me do sheet metal. I don't like sheet metal. It's sharp. It cuts you. It's just tin. It, you know, and it wasn't wood. It bothered me. It wouldn't let me have a hammer. I wanted a hammer. And then they had me drilling holes for an electrician. There was a little wood involved, so I didn't mind that. And then they had me running wire. So I learned how to be an electrician. Wow. I learned how to be a, a, a sheet metal guy. Amen. I learned how to be a plumber when I was 11. Amen. I was plumbing with my dad downtown Reno on a hotel. Praise we plumbed God. the first five stories. Didn't have one leak. I was soldering every joint. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I was 11 years old. And then they, they had to hurry, so they brought in like seven more guys to do their extra three stories. They had 12 leaks. My dad's going... <laughs> Button popping off his shirt. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, but all that time I wanted to be a carpenter. So they finally gave me a hammer. I was, I was, I was content. But you know, all those guys, I could run jobs because I knew exactly what was going on. All the jobs. Praise God. So I ended up being the boss most of the time. Thank you, Lord. It was great. I loved it. Okay. So, so we believe these things are true. In Philippians 1, 6 it says. He will finish the work that he has started. Amen. He will. Be, he who began a good work in you shall also finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. So if God has started a good work in you, he's going to get her done. Yes. 
Yes. Hallelujah. You can buck and Amen. goof around and yes. try to get... You can't get away from God. I have tried to get away from God. Amen. I have been the baddest person I ever tried to be bad. And he just, it just doesn't work. Right. He comes after you, Lord. He just, it just so breaks far. your heart because right. the Holy Spirit is in there uh, working on you. Yeah. And pretty soon you go, okay, God, I'm sorry. Okay. Amen. Okay. Leaves the 99 okay. for the one. Now, that's right. And when you are called to do something, it isn't so hard anymore. Amen. You may have challenges, but you no longer have to force the thing so bad. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Right. Now, if it's running, I used to run 10, 15 miles a day, right? But when you're running, it's hard to get your shoes on. Get your shorts on, get your shoes on, get out the door. But once you get out the door, it's joy. I love running. Amen. I, Amen. I did it because I loved it. Yes. But, but the getting up and getting out, right. that was a tough part, you know? I had to get up before work. It was dark outside. Oh, geez, right. But out there, I was out there just running. Thank I got to witness to people out there at 4 o'clock in the morning. God. Hallelujah. Now, it's like, uh, it's like going to work. It's hard to get there, but it's fun when you're there. Yes. No matter what work I was doing, I always had a good time. Yes. It was an attitude. It's an attitude. Amen. Oh, this job sucks. This job sucks. <laughs> well, go do something else. Right. I had a guy complain to me. Yeah, I had a guy complain to me. Said it was terrible. I said, listen. Do you like being a carpenter? He says, well, yeah. I says, well, you don't sound like it. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. He's just driving me crazy. He says, am I really that bad? I said, everything that comes out of your mouth, dude, is negative. Right. You're driving me nuts. It's time to find a says, job. He says, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. He didn't realize it. He liked being a carpenter. So he changed. Mm -hmm. wow. Just like that. Praise, Praise the Lord. I, I was oh. amazed. I thought he was just going to cuss me out. <laughs> okay. Here's one. Here's one. Listen to this. It's like eating well. My mouth, my mouth enjoys it. Uh, no, no. Oh yeah. My mouth doesn't enjoy it as much as my body does. So I'm going with my body. Understand? Yeah. My mouth doesn't enjoy it as much as my body does. So I'm going. It's like eating well. Mm -hmm. Donuts are really good. And I really like donuts, especially the chalk and the cream filled part. But boy, I just, it does something my body. My body doesn't like it. I get kind of sick in my stomach, get kind of dizzy, I'm all screwed up. This is sick feeling. So my body doesn't like so I don't eat donuts. I'm going with my body. Okay? So praise the Lord, when you're trying to eat well, you go with what your body's saying. Now, if I eat a carrot, my body goes, woo! <laughs> so you don't have to force yourself after a while it just comes naturally it's like it's like worship or singing or praying or bible study you just start in and pretty soon it's as easy as breathing it just is you just start you know i come over here in the morning to pray and i want you to know I don't feel like praying 90% of the time. Right. Right. I don't you, feel like going from my room over here. It's cold over here. I got my all my stuff on, and I start praying. Oh, I got to walk when I pray. I sit down. I go to sleep. I got to in the morning. So I'm walking around. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know? And pretty soon, I'm just, oh, glory to you, Jesus. All right, God. You, know? it just, you just start in. Yeah. Yeah, Same yeah, with Bible right. study. Amen. The flesh is weak, but the well, spirit is weak. Hallelujah. Amen, yeah, brother. my spirit's willing. My flesh is going, hey, this right. sucks, man. Let's look for you. Okay. So, so it's as easy as breathing that while. So far as calling goes, if you hate what you're doing, maybe you ought to rethink what you're doing. Amen. If you hate what you're doing, yeah. maybe you ought to rethink what you're doing. Or check your heart and see if you are thankful or just rebellious. Amen. Okay? If you're doing something, you should be thankful that you're doing it. Because you right now are appointed and anointed to be where you are and to do what you are doing. No matter where you are and what you're doing, you are anointed and appointed for that thing. It might not be your calling, and you might have to change things, all right? There's nothing wrong with seeking what you want or what you like, i.e. your calling. Okay, it's not wrong to... But while you're doing what you're doing, you ought to be being the best that you can be. Yes. Amen. Isn't that an army thing? Okay. We're the army of the Lord. Amen. Then we are called as soldiers in this yes. army. Amen. 
Yeah, yes. That's okay? Right. Yes, sometimes, right. sometimes it's just this. Not my will, but thine be done. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's just that. All you have to do is, not my will, but thine be done. Okay? In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Yes. <coughs> Rising the shame, sat down at the right hand of God. Now, uh, my God, can you imagine Jesus Christ knowing that he's going to go to the cross? He's out there praying, and he's... He, he doesn't want to go through that. No, right. no, he, Look at the terror he knows of it. what he's going to go through. That's right. The terror of knowing what you're going to... Shoot, I can't even go to the dentist without freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before the dentist, I, you know, I'm looking for... <laughs> I want to go get a drink before I go down to the things. Creepers, creepers. So, can you imagine Jesus doing that? But see, for the joy set before him, he endured that. Woo! Yeah. In Amen. Philippians 2, it says, Have this mind in, which, in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Being in the very form of God, consider it not something to be grasped onto, but made himself of no reputation, became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Thank you, Lord. He Amen. became obedient to that stuff. Yes. Hallelujah. So he says, Have that mind in you, which is also in him. Yes. Get to a place where we're willing to sacrifice <coughs> everything. Everything. Remember last week I told you about Helen Keller? Helen Keller mm -hmm. had four things she she uh, wanted to learn in her lifetime. And one of the things was, and I can't remember the other three, one of the things was, I want to learn to love everybody sincerely. Wow, praise yeah. God. Everybody? Boy. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. Even your enemies. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. And that was she wanted to learn. This is a lady who was deaf, dumb, and blind. And she wanted to learn to love everybody. Yeah. Way too much for me, I can't. What is that? She wasn't dumb. And I wrote, I wrote it down here. But Lord, it's too hard. It's just too hard. We do not demand out of anyone what we would not do ourselves. Right. If you are, you're a Pharisee, and you're just trying to make people do stuff that you're not going to do. Right. So we don't do that. Jesus is the same way, okay? He's been there, done that. He's been through it. He's gone through it. He's tempted in every way, just Amen. like us, yet without sin. Amen. So he is a faithful high priest. Amen. He is a faithful high priest who can relate with what you're going through. He's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He understands everything you're going through. Yes. Hallelujah. He had loss. He had uh, suffering. He had uh, hunger, <coughs> thirst, cold. He had everything. He knows what you're going through, and he is there for you. Amen. He is there for you. He is there for you. All you need to do is call on his name. And he is such a lover, he'll just come. He will. He just he will just come. Praise the Lord, Lord. So his grace is sufficient for me. Okay. So it says in Ecclesiastes 9:10, we went over this. What we do, we do with our might. He says, whatever you do, do it, do it with your might. Do it with all your heart. Get with it. Okay. So we do our best to honor God. Now, in Matthew, I'm gonna go there. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, this is so good. This is, this is, uh, this is, anyway, let's just read part of it. Nice. Again? Matthew 25, Matthew 25, the 25th chapter of Matthew. Matthew 25. I know you guys love the word, so I... <coughs> okay. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins, we took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Amen. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps, took no oil <coughs> with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. You notice they all slumbered and slept. It's important to know. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. And all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They got ready to go. All right? And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now, I used to think this was selfish, but, but the wise said, No, lest there should not be enough for you and us, but go rather to those who sell and buy some for yourselves. So they were being kind. He says, No, we only brought enough for ourselves, and we're gonna, the bridegroom's going to, we're going to be ready. Okay? So they sent them off, and then it says, While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him, and the wedding, and the door was shut. <coughs> Afterwards, the other virgin came also and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not 
know you. Amen. Now watch this. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man has come. So I believe that God is saying, get some oil in your lamp. Amen. Trim your wicks. Amen. Trim your wicks. Get ready to go. And take some extra oil with you. You may be slumbering, sleeping, but the, when the call comes, when the call comes, you're ready to go. All right? Now, in 1 Samuel 16, 1, I'm going to read that too because I can't quote it the best. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the first verse is, uh, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing, you have, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Feel you. <coughs> Fill your horn with oil. And go. For I am sending you. You notice that? It says, fill your horn with oil. Yeah. And go. For I am sending you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, we, we need to get our... See, now, when your oil is low, it's harder to move. It's harder to move. So when your oil is low, when you aren't filled up with the Spirit of God... Mm -hmm. You, your oil gets low, Amen. and you're not ready to minister. Amen. You're not ready to touch people's lives. That's why we come in and we pray in the morning. Yes. All right? Amen. We pray in the morning, in, in the mornings, and, and get our lives right with God, and get get ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you don't you don't uh, stop there. It's like any relationship, right? Mm -hmm. We get together with God, and all day long we talk to Him all day long. It's like my relationship with my wife. I get up, we talk, we pray, and things like that. But when I go about my day and come back later, I, and, and, and she, she wants to know something, I don't say, ah, we, we met this morning. Knock it off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I talk with her. I talk with her. I want to know what she thinks. I want, to, I want her to know what I'm thinking. I know what, what to know. So it's like God. Any relationship is like that. Yes, we meet in the morning. We have our devotional time, and we love on God. But during the day... We talk to Him. Amen. Praise His name. Amen. Otherwise, we just miss it. Amen. We just miss it. Yeah. So, oh, that's good. <laughs> How can I go? He says, Saul will kill me. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He says, Samuel told God, Hey, God, how can I go? Saul's going to kill me. He said, ah, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. And I'm not going to go into that whole thing. But it's, 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 we need to fill our horns with oil yes. and go. Because yes. God is sending us. Amen. Whatever our calling is, wherever we're going, yes. to work, to play, whatever we're doing, we need to fill our horns with oil so we're ready to minister in the Spirit. Can you imagine getting on, a, getting on an elevator? Getting on an elevator, and you're there, and somebody asks you a question about your faith, and you've got to pray for a couple minutes? Before you answer them, right. <laughs> there's a little girl, and I told this story last service. There's a little girl whose mama, I think it was Randy Hicks's wife, her, her mama had a bellyache. And this little girl was just anointed for healing. So, honey, would you pray for mama's belly? He says, hang on, mama. I haven't been with Jesus yet. Oh, wow. So she went in the bathroom, Amen, closed the door, and she heard her in there praying in tongues, uh, five years old. So she comes out five minutes later. She says, "Okay, mom, I'm ready." Praise God. Puts her hand in her mom's belly. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And her mom never had a problem after that. Thank you. Ever. Praise the Lord. Now that was okay at that in that place. And the little girl knew she needed to get with God first. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if you haven't been with God, you get into that elevator and you got to pray in tongues for five minutes. It's only 30 seconds up and down. Come on, you got to have an answer ready to go. Yes. Hallelujah. You need the spirit to pop out of you. You need to have a prophetic utterance for that person. Yes. You need to have that thing already ready. So we need to fill our horns with all up. Amen. Amen. That's Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. No. Hallelujah. Because yes. it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Yes. Oh, yes. When you get Jesus in you, he comes with his anointing. Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ, the word Christ means the anointed one. Yes. So the anointed one comes with his anointing. Yes. When he comes in you and fills you up, your his anointing comes, okay? Yes. So full of oil, no matter where you are and what you're doing, breaks yokes. Full of oil, no matter where you are, what you're doing, it breaks yokes, yes. and people get free. Yes. It's just the way it is. Amen. They get free. 
So that's what we need to do. Yes. E even, yeah. even, if, what, even if it looks like to you that you're not full. Yeah. If you're full and you sought God and you've been in His presence, don't wait for some feeling. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. Shoot, you don't have to have a feeling to minister in power. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Um, can I say one thing? Go ahead. Uh, in verse 8, it says, The foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. What the foolish didn't understand is, is that the Holy Spirit is free. Hallelujah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Never thought of that before. They didn't have to go buy nothing. They just right. had to go fill it, get filled yeah. up. That's yeah. the religious. That Ooh, that that's good. That's good. Stuff, yeah. it, there's also an anointing of joy Amen. that comes. Amen. You know, it takes 62 muscles to yeah. frown. It takes 26 yes. muscles to smile. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And when you get the oil of joy upon you, something happens to your face. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it just, take, just takes a lot of effort to cry. <laughs> 62 muscles, can't imagine, 26 muscles to smile. I'm, I'm working out. <laughs> The Bible says in, in Psalm 16:11, it says, "In your presence is fullness of joy." Wow. Yes. Anointed with the oil of joy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Get the oil flowing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Now you don't gotta walk all around all day. You know, <laughs> my dad used to say, uh, "No, I, I won't say that." <laughs> dad went to my Can't dad. believe that. <laughs> He's okay, but he had some different ways of saying things. <laughs> so, so who you are? Is who you are. Thank you, Lord. Warts and all. Thank you. Who you are is who you are, warts and all. That's who you are, okay? Not who you are trying to be, it's who you are and whose you are. These understandings come. Who you are is who you are. You do it different than anyone else. Amen. You're not like me, you're not like the guy next to you, you do it different than anybody else. So where you are at the time you're there, only you can do that thing, okay? Amen. Now, if you're if you say, well, uh, I cuss out everybody. That's just the way I am. No, no, no. <laughs> we grow in God, and we get rid of the stupid stuff, okay? Not the bad stuff. We change that, okay? But we're still who we are. This is important. You are going for God as hard as anybody else you know. It's just true about each one of us. We're going for God just as hard as we can. We're doing it, everything we can to get into His presence, Amen. to know His will for our life, to seek His face, okay? Thank and you. we are bringing people to Christ because of that. Because of what Christ has put in us for them. Amen. Because what if Christ has put in us for them. You. you have something from God for somebody else right. today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you're ready to give it away. Thank you, Lord. So that's why we remember <coughs> the Lord. We remember the Lord. So when we're in a conversation all the time, in the back of our head, we're asking Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? You. you know, if somebody's flipping us off, we want to know what to do for them. Thank you. Not punch them, not Thank flip you. them off. What to do for them because we love them. Okay? Yeah. Okay. In Isaiah 40, verse 4, i got to read this because it's such a wonderful verse. Isaiah 50, verse 4. Oh, 50. Yeah. <clears throat> 40 didn't sound right. I'm not dyslexic. I'm not going to confess that. Okay. Amen. Verse 4, it says, <clears throat> The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. Amen. Isn't that great? Wow, praise God. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. Amen. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn back. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen to this. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. That's Jesus. That's yeah. it. That's, That's exactly it. Jesus. And the same spirit that dwelt in him dwells in us. Amen. So we don't have to worry about it when somebody spits on us Amen. or says, give me a break or anything like that. We can stay full of joy yes. and full of the presence of God in our yes. life. Praise the Lord. Praise God. This is Amen. awesome Thank stuff. Glory to God. So, it's not about who we think we should be or who we are trying to be. It's who we know we are in Christ Amen. because of Christ. Yes. When His life comes within you, you begin to grow 
if you want to. Amen. You are born again. You are justified. Remember what we learned last week? When you when Christ washes your sins away, you are justified yeah. to come into the presence of God. Right. Amen. You're justified. And then you begin to be sanctified, yes. which takes a lifetime to be sanctified. You begin to grow. Yeah. Okay? And then at the end, you get glorified. Amen. Amen. I know saints have been glorified. Amen. Remember that one old boy on the phone with the guy? Yeah. Call him up. He's kind of depressed that day. Call up his buddy. And he didn't want to give him any bad news, but his, his mom had died. Yeah. He says, well, brother, mom died. And he heard the phone drop on the ground. <laughs> oh, my God, I killed him. He's an old guy, right? Like 90 years old. Oh my God, I killed him with sorrow. And here's all the screaming and yelling and stuff like that. And finally, the guy gets her phone back and he says, Are you telling me she got in before me? I would keep myself holy all these years, 50 years, and she got in before Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! And he's all excited as that. And the guy was just going, I thought I killed you, you know. Here you are. I'm going to kill you with joy rather than sorrow. When a Christian goes home, they are glorified. Yes. They get glorified. Hallelujah. God calls things are not that are not as though they already were. Praise the Lord. So he, when he says it, he says, you've been justified, you've been sanctified, and you've been glorified. Well, God already sees it done. Praise God. So go ahead. See it done. It's okay. Okay. Where was I? Okay. Life, <laughs> this life you have is from God. This anointing destroys yokes. Mm -hmm. I had this vision the other day, yes. or a kind of a vision. I guess it was a vision. I was praying. I was praying some of these scriptures about God surrounding us. Okay? I was praying these scriptures, praying these scriptures, and all of a sudden I had a sense of, of, of God's presence all around me. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't a bubble, it was just a presence that was farther than me. Praise God. It was just farther than me. Yeah. Now, now uh, proximity was important, so I couldn't wait to get proximitized with somebody mm -hmm. and see if it, you know. <laughs> 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 but it was his presence, and then I got to study the Word, and I got a couple of these things. It, it says in Psalm 34, right back a couple places here, Psalm 34, it says uh, in the 7th and 8th verse, it says, Psalm 34. I'm in Isaiah. No wonder it doesn't make any sense. Oh, Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. Okay. <laughs> Psalm 34. 34. 7 and 8, it says, The angel of the Lord encamps round about them who fear him and delivers them. Amen. Isn't that good? Yes. He says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. He says, Taste. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear Him. And He delivers them. I like deliver. Not that I need deliverance from anything, but I need deliverance. Every one of us have things we're dealing with we need to get delivered of. Praise the Lord. God is the one. And He says the angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear Him. So if you fear God, you notice He says He delivers them. So they were in a place where they needed to be delivered. Amen. Right. We're in good company. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Let's go on. In Psalm 32. Go back a couple pages. Oh, this is good. In Psalm 32, 7, it says, You are my hiding place. You right. shall preserve me from trouble and shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Amen. So God be singing over you. Praise God. He's singing over you. Yes. Deliverance songs. Oh, Regina is delivered. Sean is delivered. Matt is delivered. Oh, I sing these songs to you. you know, I don't know how I sing. Probably not like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a, a negative part of this, too. It's kind of fun. Let's go back to 2 Kings 6. 2 Kings 6. Yeah, I didn't say that. 2 Kings 6. The 6th chapter. And uh, the... The 14th verse, it says, 2 Kings 6, 14, yeah. He says, <clears throat> oh, this is about Gehazi. This is about Elisha and Gehazi. And they're, and, and they, they have, they're staying in a city, and a king sends a whole army. And look what it says. It says, and when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? 
He's surrounded. The enemy has surrounded him. Now, Elisha is not nervous at this point in time. you think he would be. The army came after him to kill his sorry hide. Right. Because he'd been telling things about, you know, okay. And so he answered, don't fear for those who are with us are more than are with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Elisha, no, no, no. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened his eyes and the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Praise Look God. at this. All around That's Elisha. So, so the army was surrounding him, but all of these things were... So you and I yep. are the same way. Praise God. Bro. Don't you think for a minute, there's been story after story after story after story after story that I've read where people are in jungles and, and terrible places, yep. and, uh, bad places, and they come up and a bunch of people try to attack them and they just drop their swords and run. And the people go, what, what happened? They go into the village and say, what happened? He says, well, we weren't afraid of you. We were afraid of those people behind you. Praise God. That seven-foot dude. Yeah. <laughs> Shining Lord. like That's light, you know. <laughs> the angel of the Lord encamps around those. Who, you know, when you're just like a big brother. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I told you that last week. I was a big brother, and I understand big brothers. Big brothers get in a lot of fights because they're little brothers. That's okay. Bad. As a little brother, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mom, you can lick me, but you can't lick my brother. <laughs> I got a lot of fights like that. Okay, Genesis 19, 4 says, uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, Lot, when the angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it, they went to Lot's house, and he said, he, and he knocks on Lot's door, and Lot brings him inside, come in, quick, you know. And so they're there, and the whole city comes and surrounds the house. He said from every quarter, every quarter they came. So north, south, east, and west. Mm -hmm. They came and surrounded the house. Mm -hmm. Now, when they surrounded the house, what does the Lord do? The angels strike them with blindness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He strikes them with blindness. These people have come to abuse them. Mm -hmm. God strikes them with blindness. I want you to know that the enemy has no power over you. Right. That God has not allowed him to come into your life. Amen. You can stop him in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Jesus. just how much... Wait, you have faith that he will. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have faith that he will. Don't freak out. Just don't freak out. Don't let fear overtake you. Don't let fear grab you and keep you like that. Right. Just Amen. don't let it happen. Amen. Remember that lady who had people talking to her? All the time in the house over there, we went to clean it out. And she had this, these people talking to her. She could see the people they were talking to her, but she knew they weren't real. She knew they weren't alive because they're there all the time. She talked to those people for four years. I think it was like four years. Talked to these people. Finally, she was sick of it. She called us up and uh, she called Linda up. Says, Linda, these things. Oh, don't worry about it. We'll come over. So we went over there, run them, run them things off, and she never had a problem with those things again. She'll, yeah, praise the Lord. You only, you only have those things because you fear them. Yes. Yeah, that's what, okay. yeah. I don't know that song. I was trying to get it. So, so, okay. Jesus was surrounded. Fire from heaven. Oh, somebody look up Revelation 20 verse 9, will you? Revelation 20. 20 verse 9. Right before you do that, in yeah, Hebrews, in Hebrews 12, oh, go ahead, then. excuse oh. me, Pastor, I have to. Okay. And they went up on God the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. They surrounded the saints, heaven came down from, fire came down from heaven and devoured Amen. the people that were after the saints. Amen. I read the, read the next verse. Okay. Verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I read the back of the book. Amen. We win. We win. We win. <laughs> Evil will not triumph, ultimately. Evil will not triumph. It might look like it. It might get crazy and hairy. But I want you to know, whoever wins on... November 3rd, right. we are still Christians, Amen. we're still going to believe God, we're still yes. filled with the Holy Spirit, we still have faith, we're not going it, to, it doesn't, it's not the point, right. God is still God, Amen. and God is still on the Amen. throne, and we worship the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, He is the Lord of every Lord, Amen. the Lord of every president, Amen. the Lord of every king, Amen. He yes. is the Lord, Amen. Yes. and as we serve Him, only things that come into our life are those things that He would yes. allow. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, 
For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. Yes. Okay? For the joy set before him, and it says in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, therefore. Therefore. Why is it therefore? It's Hebrews 11. Great cloud of witnesses, right? Yeah. Okay, because of this great cloud of witnesses, so many different people, different walks of life, kings, business people, shepherds, carpenters, farmers, nomads, all were anointed and appointed in their realms to function as in faith like they did. Now watch this, watch this. All are called and appointed and anointed. They're murderers, they're deceivers, they're adulterers, they're liars, yeah. and they're willing seekers of God. Yeah. I want you to know both the positive and the neg negative are true, and if you seek God with all your heart, He comes and anoints you and appoints you to do what you're doing at that time. Jesus. God always called the not so great people. Yeah. Why? Because so He gets the glory. The worse you are, the better God, more God gets glory. Amen. Not that we continue Amen. in our stupidness. Right. Amen. But as we change and God begins to use us, just because that's why we put the past in the past. Amen. You need to get rid of your past. Let your past go. Amen. Bury the past. Put it. Get it under blood. Get your future and get your hope out there. But function right now. Function by faith. Function by faith. God is right now. That's why we come in here. I don't think about later. I don't think about what I'm going to have for lunch. I don't think about those things. I don't think what, what I got to do tomorrow. Yeah. I'm kind of hungry now. <laughs> I started thinking about it. See? But I'm not worried about the past. What you know, the the, the thing I did yesterday, the thing I did this morning. And I don't let that bother me. I come in here. I focus on Jesus. I focus on His presence. Because in His presence, the mountains melt like wax. All my troubles melt like wax and become flat before God. And I can walk with God and function in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So as you're going about your day in the world, go ahead and do that. Focus on Jesus. Find out. Now, listen to me real close. Because when you're at work, you need to work. You know, you don't need to be concentrating on something else when you're working. So when you're working, you might forget all about God, but you're doing your best for His glory. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You're doing the best for His glory, so you need to concentrate on what you're doing. You're not over here somewhere trying to be spiritual. This is spiritual. Right. Yeah. Your calling is spiritual. Your calling is real. It's a good thing you're doing. Yeah. So, but when God comes to your mind, you say, yeah, Lord, what? do you need something? But you're at work magnifying God. Isn't Amen. that the coolest thing? Amen. You're anointed to do what you're doing, although it doesn't look spiritual. Right. I know a guy used to work at the, uh, the Mustang Ranch up at a, a restaurant. And he considered that his calling. Amen. People used to get all over him. You shouldn't work at that place. What better place? Yes. Yes. What better place yeah. to work? Or yeah. crying out loud. Yes. You want to catch fish? Go to yeah. go to a pond where there's fish in it. Oh, Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I just can't work in that place. Oh, you prig. <laughs> Self-righteous prig. I, I read that. That's a good word. <laughs> it's not a good thing to be, but it's a... Okay. <laughs> so we're willing seekers. Amen. Yeah. Jesus. We're not self-righteous weirdos. Okay? Right. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. You've shown us who you are more today. You showed us how to get justified, how to get born again, how to be filled with your spirit. God, we just love you. And thank you for showing up during the as we worship you and we sang the songs, Lord, you've done what you said you would do. We praise you today for this. We praise you today for this. We praise you for it. Thank you that your word will not return void. It will accomplish what it was sent to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for allowing us to give today. We're excited about that. Because your economy is so cool. We used to think we were suckers. Now we're just Christians. Lord, you get to give stuff away and it's yes. okay. Yes. And thank you, Lord. As we give, so shall it be given unto us. Yes. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you for this, Lord. And we bless you now as we worship in this way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise oh, the Lord. Pastor, is there going to be another offering for uh, Jesus?
Not today. Oh. Next week there is. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to say that. As we give this out, I want you to think about what you want to give. Gene is uh, a pastor in Fallon. Uh, in, actually, uh, in um, the other side of Fallon. Right there. Oh, What's oh, it called? Anyway, in Fallon. Yeah, and she is she's living in her car since last the end of last winter, all summer long. She's living in her car. She's 85 years old. She's got bed bugs. Bed bugs. So she won't go back in her house. Of course she won't go back in her house. Well, Brother Chuck was there yesterday. Hallelujah. Yeah, they went in there. So stay with Chuck. Anyway, anyway, we're going to take an offering next week because it costs like 1500 bucks to get the guys in there because they have to heat up the house real slow and then zap them. And you can't just bug bomb them. It doesn't work. So they put mouse traps over there. They bug bombed it yesterday. But we need these pros to come in and wipe out the bed bugs. And she was so embarrassed to have somebody come in her house because it was it was dirty. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she's 85 years old. So we're gonna pray about it this week and bring in the offering. You want to get get it to me this week? I'm 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 home sometimes and so just call me on my phone if you want to get that done. So that's what we're gonna do next week. We're gonna take an offering for that. Praise God. Amen. So she can, you know, it's 85 years old. It's going to be 17 degrees tomorrow. Right? Anyway, praise the Lord. Bed bugs. Bed bugs. Oh yeah, and that thing. There's a, there's a, uh, those, those little boxes that you took to. They have to be in by the 8th of November. But if you want to do one and you're just not the shopper type, you can get online and pay the nine bucks. And tell them to go shopping for you. There are people who love to shop. Mm. <laughs> and they know what to get. Mm. And they want, know what not to get. So you don't send some stupid thing over there. Mm. So you can get online. <laughs> and the <laughs> thing is SamaritansPerth.org OC, uh, slash OCC. So you just get online. And you call them up and say, I want 27 boxes. Mm. And OCC you just, stands for Operation Christmas Child. Oh, Operation Christmas Child. Christmas Child. Thank you. Oh, that's what Franklin Graham. Did. Yeah, Franklin oh, Graham. It's uh, uh, yeah. Oh, praise God. Yeah. And what they do is send the gospel over there with them. They give them this stuff. The kids are so. I have a video, but I don't know how to get her done. <laughs> anyway, so if you want to do that, that's why I'm going to do it because I don't like to shop. <laughs> You're always a bummer. I mean, huh? You're always a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> you just take it up while you He does. He does. He's a closet shopper. Yeah. The way I shop, I go in, get what I need, come back out, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> in Walmart, they go fishing. Oh. That's right. That's right. Fishing. Fishing at Walmart. That's right. <laughs> so, Lord, I pray you bless us as we go from this place. I let your uh, God just lead us this week and who we can lead to Christ so we don't have to do it. In fact, today, if, if you don't think you're saved, if you don't know that you have eternal life, if you die today, you don't know that you go to heaven, I want you to come up here and talk to me after we get going here, okay? So just do that. Make sure. So God bless you all. Have a wonderfully groovy day. Amen. Amen.